So here's uh, going to, here's our unified way of playing with those objects. So unified, well, one of many, of course. So a unified way of thinking. is going to be playing with those things, changing one parameter at a time. All right, so the way we will do it is, well, it's uh, kind of simple in algebra. You look at, it, look at the equation and everybody can take everything to one side, right? It is very simple algebraic operation. You bring everything to the left, why? minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And then how do you play? Well, you play with that number. What if this left-hand side equals something else? And you can also do similar thing with this geometry. Whatever geometric condition you have, well, it can be very complicated, but it still has equality involved. So you take everything on one side, the other side will become zero automatically, and then you say, oh, okay, well, what if that number is not zero? And you ask, well, what if this condition is about the sum of the distances being equal to something else? Well, let's play with, with the ellipse. What does it give us? So you have the point A, you have the point B, you have the ellipse described by the PA plus PB equals what? I would say seven, something, a number, right? So I just suggested to take seven to left-hand side, make it equal to zero, and change that number zero. Change it to let's say 2. What happens? Now the sum has to be 9. Can you imagine the ellipse <coughs> having sum to these two equal to 9? How is it, relate, uh, how is it uh, positioned relatively to this ellipse? Is it smaller, bigger? Wider. It's wider. It's bigger. It contains this ellipse inside, right? So it's bigger ellipse. Do they ever intersect? No. no, because at the point of intersection, we would have condition that equals zero and that equals two simultaneously. That's impossible. Right? So they never intersect. What if it is not two, but negative two? What about that ellipse? It will be smaller, sitting inside. And what if I make that number even smaller? And even smaller, and even smaller. And what about negative seven? Just a point. Is it? The sum of the two distances equals zero. What are all those points P satisfying this condition? In the center? What's the sum PA plus PB in the center? Is it zero? So where is such a point? A point P is such that PA plus PB equals zero. It's a line, it's a line? A segment. A segment? Well, the midpoint is not there, right? Well, take a point here. PA plus PB must be equal to zero. Is it zero? No. no. Can you find me a point P somewhere? It's in between, maybe. <coughs> in between, but not here, not here, not here, not even here. Where in between then? Half of A and B. There's no such a point. There's no such thing. And this, this is a positive number, isn't it? And that is a positive number, right? How can we make the sum of two positive numbers being zero? 
only if you make that number equal to zero and that number equal to zero at the same time. Well, but that's impossible. Okay. So there is no such a thing as this equals minus seven. So as you make this number smaller and smaller, the curve disappears at some point. So when does it disappear? When it's a straight line, right? When it is straight segment joining A and B. And what should be the value there then? When it becomes just a straight line segment. Well, let me just leave that question and go into, let's say, physics with this hanging wire. Let's look at the exploration there. Well, let me fix these two points and make wire longer. So then it becomes, it looks like this. And like that. Right, and <coughs> now, will these curves intersect? If you, well, they touch at these two points, right? But otherwise, they don't intersect, right? The longer you make it, the deeper it goes. And it doesn't intersect the previous curves. But if you make it shorter, At some point, it becomes a line. And at some point, you, you just cannot make it shorter. Right? It cannot be shorter that, than this straight line segment. All right. So, so what are we doing here? Well, I just missed another interpretation. I just missed this temperature or Altitude example. So what happens there? What does physics suggest? What's the way of understanding those curves? <coughs> well, physics doesn't uh, separate that particular curve from anything else on the plane. Right? So if you look at this curve where temperature is equal to 40, it might be rather special because of the value 40. But we all know that temperature exists at all the other points. Right? So in physics, at least in those interpretations, there are other curves automatically, immediately. Just because we look at this situation. And what if you look at the altitude on a map? Have you seen those curves having the same altitude? Isn't the whole map filled with all those curves? And you usually don't uh, pick one of them and study that particular one. Right? What you do is you study how that altitude changes. For example, if you, want, if you plan to walk this way, you would like to know how much your altitude will change on the way. And how quickly, yes. How difficult it will be for you to follow that path. 